Hi everyone, this is Gail from Pretty Presets and today I just wanted to go over a few of the new features that Adobe released yesterday. It's October 2017 and there are some pretty interesting um, and exciting updates that they released yesterday. So first of all, Lightroom now has a new name. Yes, it is still called Lightroom, but for the last 18 months or so I have been referring to the Creative Cloud version of Lightroom that I own, the one where I pay a monthly subscription, I've been referring to that as Lightroom CC, short for Creative Cloud. Well, yesterday, Lightroom announced that the version of Lightroom that I have been using and that I will continue using is now going to be called Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. So, this isn't a huge deal. They're just adding the name Classic into it. However, the thing that makes it confusing is that they also released a new app, an app that replaces Lightroom Mobile, and it is now called Lightroom CC. So that's the part that makes it confusing. So the Lightroom that you know and love and have been using for many years, if you used Lightroom 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever, that Lightroom is now going to be called Lightroom Classic. And the other mobile app that they released that is a cloud-based version, um, and I'll go over maybe a little bit more what that is in a different blog post or video, but that is now called Lightroom CC. And it's going to be confusing, I think, for people, especially people who don't do a little bit of research or, or understand about these new features. So you'll be able to see up here in the upper left hand side my Lightroom now says Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. So anyway just just a bit of an update something that you need to be aware of something that I think could be confusing to people if they don't know. So now the other thing that has been added um, to this new version of Lightroom is speed. It is now faster. So there are a couple of ways that it's faster. As I move between the library and the develop module, there used to be more lag. There is not lag anymore. You can see that I can move between it pretty quickly and it pulls up quickly. I used to move to the develop and I would see a little bit of lag, um, wait for things to kind of resolve. I don't see that anymore. So I think that you'll notice as you're moving through that things are, are quicker. You know, as I scroll through images, I see a little bit more quickness. I'm going to show you how to see even more quickness with that. So let's go to back to the library module. Let's go to import some photos. I just took some photos this morning of my son outside. We're going to come import those. Sorry, you've got to go through all my other ones. There's been a feature um, before in Lightroom over here in the file handling section called embedded in sidecar and if you want the maximum amount of quickness between your images so especially if you're culling through a lot of images you're you're just using your arrow keys to go through and cull and select favorites then this is probably the option for you you're going to want to choose embedded in sidecar and basically this has been there before but basically what this is doing if you're shooting raw um, anytime you're shooting raw there is going to be a JPEG embedded in that raw file so basically what this is doing is this is going to make that JPEG what you see as you're culling so that you can move a lot faster through your images so let's just go in here I'm gonna quickly import these I don't know, my son let me take a whole five photos of him for you this morning so I could show you how to import. I'm just going to type his name. Um, that's really creative. But you can see I already have another Jacob, so it has to be something different than that. And we're going to click on import. So we're just going to watch these files import here for a second. Shouldn't take too long, there's only five of them. So now is the, if I go down here and click on this larger view, the loop view, I will see um, this little notice down here that says embedded preview. 
So I'm going to just scroll through these. You can see that I can scroll th through these very quickly. There's no rendering. What I'm seeing is a the embedded JPEG. If I click on embedded preview, you'll see that it changes. And now I'm looking at the actual raw photo. And as those render, you can see how it, the, it flattens out a little bit. There's actually more information in there. There were a few highlights blown in my other one. Now I don't have that. And as they render, then there, there was a little arrow, double arrow here that went away. And so now I can see the actual photo. But if you want to, and I can scroll through them quickly now because they're all rendered. But if you want the fastest viewing immediately, that embedded is going to be the option you want to choose. And you'll be able to scroll through these really quickly and see exactly what your photos look like super fast. So the last um, feature that I just kind of want to go over in this video is the new range masking feature and this is a really fun feature that um, I think is going to provide some value to everyone so I just want to come back to this other folder I'm going to just click on favorites and I'm going to show you how this works so before when you added a radial filter or a brush or a graduated filter Let's just look here. Let's say that I wanted to darken all this, this green area. I could add a graduated filter. Okay, and you can see that it darkens in a straight line. And, and that's how graduated filters work. They darken in a straight line. I've got my overlay on here so you can see where it's um, affecting those, or what areas of my photo it's affecting. So with that that was my option I could I actually have a brush tool that I could go in and I could erase off so it didn't affect these leaves it would only affect the background and I can do that now one of the things they've added is a range mask so down here it's going to be below these other sliders for your brush tool um, I'm going to choose range mask and for this one I'm going to choose color so let's turn off the overlay here Let's say that instead of this affecting the leaves, I want it to only affect this green area in the background. So I'm given a dropper here when I choose color. I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to click on the green background, okay? Something that's really cool, you'll see how that changed. Now I'm seeing different areas. I can shift click and add in different areas. So it's gonna choose different greens and I can just shift click and then turn on my overlay and see that now it's affecting all of this green area but it's not affecting the leaves here and that's really cool because before I would have had to go back and brush that but now I it's just automatically understanding where I want to to choose and I'll, I can go back in here and I can brush if it's not perfect great but a really super fast way to apply it to different areas. And remember, it's just if I can click, and that will just give me one area, but if I want to choose multiple areas, I can shift click. Okay, and you can see how this is applying as I'm shift clicking. I'm gonna turn off my overlay. I'm just pressing O to turn my overlay on and off. And that's kind of looking wonky, so I would probably play with it a little bit differently there. So anyway, a really nice, a nice feature that you can now do in Photoshop or in Lightroom. Also, you have more options. You can choose luminance. Now, luminance, you gotta think of luminance as brightness and darkness. So this would be good for perhaps skin tones. Skin tones are bright and in most photos, they're going to be the brightest area. So let's come over here. Let me see if I can find an image really quickly. My daughter. So if I wanted to apply, and I might already have applied here, let's just go look. Say a radial filter to her face. Let's invert this. Let's go to add light instead of add drama. That's too much, but let's just see how this works. Let's turn on luminance. Luminance is brightness. So I want this to apply to the brighter tones here. Let's turn on my overlay. You can see how it's applying before I make any adjustments. 
I'm just going to change my range here. And you can see that I'm going to actually pull down because I don't want it to apply to the very brightest highlights in her hair. You can see that it's now just applying to mostly her face and these little highlights right up here. So think of luminance as brightness. If there's a certain brightness of your photo that you want to apply it to or darkness, same thing, um, you can use these little sliders to, to target those specific areas. Smoothness is going to be just how much it's applying and how, how sensitive these settings are. So you can, you can choose that as well. Anyway, fun new features, and I've been enjoying these very much. Hopefully you will enjoy the new features that are in Lightroom and the new version of Lightroom. Hopefully the name change will not confuse you too much. Um, thanks for being with me for a little bit today, and have fun playing in Lightroom.